magical puppy. He's the puppy for you. He wears a magical collar to make his wishes come true. Merlin, Merlin, won't you come out to play? Merlin has a problem. Yesterday he buried a bone, and today he can't remember where he buried it. It was definitely in the garden, but now he's not sure if it was in this particular garden. The trouble is that gardens all tend to look the same when you're in a hurry to bury a bone. I've already dug there. And there. Merlin decides to carry on digging. He's interrupted by a voice. Hey! Oh, my word! Ah, help at last. Right, I'll dig here. You can look over by the greenhouse. What have you done to my garden? Merlin tries to explain that yesterday he buried a bone and that he spent all morning looking for it all by himself and that if she's not too busy, would she mind helping him try to find it? Oh! Ah, good, thinks Merlin. She's probably gone to fetch a spade. Sure, you will never be able to dig properly with that. I'll give you digging in my garden. Go on, clear off, you. Go on, get out. Right, that's it. Ha! This is Sandy Bay Harbour, a quiet, peaceful village. Well, it's normally peaceful and quiet. This is Ernie, the harbour master and he seems to be having a spot of bother. Ernie looks after Merlin, and it seems that Merlin's search for his missing bone has upset some of the villagers. You should see my garden. It looks like a bomb seated. Then I went out this morning and fell into a hole as big as a crater. My prize-winning geraniums ruined... You have to do something about controlling your dog. Merlin, come here. I want a word with you. Have you been digging in people's gardens again? Merlin? What a day. A lost bone, a low-flying slipper, and now grounded. Oh, well, thinks Merlin. It can't get any worse. Oh, things can always get worse, squawks Gull. Here comes Oscar. Oscar loves to come down to the harbour. If he's lucky, he gets to eat the odd fish. And if he's particularly lucky, he gets to torment Merlin. He purrs. You're not very good, are you? Gull squawks. Hello, Ernie, says the shopkeeper. Morning, Albert. I haven't seen you for a while. How are things down at Sandy Bay Harbour? They're very good, thank you, except for a small problem. He's a little puppy-shaped problem called Merlin, and I need to get him a collar. He's been a bit naughty, I'm afraid. Well, uh, you're in luck, Ernie. I have, uh, I have just the very thing. You've named your puppy Merlin, haven't you? Well, uh... Look at this. Oh, this does look grand. Yes, and so it should. Uh, according to legend, this very collar was made by Merlin the Magician in the court of King Arthur. He made it for his own puppy. It's, uh, it's supposed to be magic. Really? How exciting! Merlin the Wizard to Merlin the Puppy. What a coincidence. Ernie smiles. I shall have to buy it now. Indeed you shall! <laughs>, Laughs Albert. 
You see, his puppy used to wander off and get lost all the time, so Merlin gave the puppy this magic collar so that he could wish his way home again. I'll take it. A magical red collar for a magical little puppy. A naughty, magic little puppy. Good news, Merlin. I've got a surprise for you. Well, you found my bone. Now, now, I've bought you a collar. Not any old collar, but a special collar. My friend Albert gave it to me. It's an antique. That means it's very, very old. Albert says that it was worn by a puppy who belonged to a magical, mystical wizard from the times of castles and kings many years ago. And his name was Merlin just like you. It even has a little disc with your name on it. It says Merlin. It's your own special magical collar. And even though you dug up all of those gardens, I know that you're a magical little puppy. Well, Merlin felt very grown up in his new collar and was determined to stay out of trouble and be a good puppy. That is, until he heard a deep growl from his stomach. Oh, if only I had that bone. I'm so hungry. Then Merlin remembers what Ernie said. It's your own special magical collar. Hmm, I wonder if I really can do magic. Now, let me see where to begin. Hmm, oh, that's a bit tricky. Maybe if I chase my tail. Where's my bone? 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 Nothing seems to have worked. Oh, I wish I could find that bone. As soon as Merlin says the magic wish word. That's it! I remember this tree! It worked! I can do magic! It must have been when I chased my tail! Unfortunately, Merlin realises he's in the garden where the woman with the flying slipper lives. And although he's very hungry, he can't risk getting caught digging again. This could take forever, Merlin thinks to himself. Unless I try the magic collar again. Make me invisible, make me invisible, make me invisible, make me invisible, make me invisible. <laughs> I'm invisible now. I told you once. But I'm supposed to be invisible. Oh, this collar doesn't work. Well, I wish I was invisible now. Where did he go? Poor Miss Parkway thought she'd been out in the sun too long and must have imagined the whole thing. Hmm. Meanwhile, Oscar is on the harbour front, about to tuck into a nice fresh fish. I've got your fish and you can't get it. I am invisible and I've got your fish and you can't get it and you're always horrible to me. But now I've got your fish. Fishy, fishy, fish. Just then, he hears Ernie calling him from the hut. Merlin! Here, boy! Come on, Merlin! Make me visible! Merlin chases his tail around and around and around. I'm here! I wonder where he's got to. He's going to miss his favourite sausages. But as Ernie can't see Merlin, he goes back inside. Oh, I'm here, but he can't see me! I'm still invisible! Oh, I wish I could be seen again. As soon as Merlin says the magic wish word, Oh, I missed my sausages. What a terrible day. But then he remembers how he fooled Oscar. Well, it wasn't all that bad, really. <laughs> I've got your fish. <laughs> <laughs>